Hey everyone, this is Eric from Spofford Press, and this video is about three months in the making. It's going to show the process of creating a wood engraving from the initial sketch all the way to the finished print. Um, I do a lot of engraving, relief engraving, usually on resin grade blocks, which are like a synthetic version of end grain, but this project was totally cool. I'm a member of the Wood Engravers Network, and the Wood Engravers Network partnered up with the Hamilton uh, Wood Type and Printing Museum about a year ago, and they came up with this idea where they would take uh, quarter round pieces of end grain maple, the same stuff that Hamilton makes their type out of, and they would send them off to some of the WEN members that wanted to be part of this. And the only thing you had to know was you had to make a carp, like the fish, so you could do anything you wanted, any kind of carp, it could be realistic, cartoony, whatever, but that was the idea. And it was for something called Carpe Diem, or Seize the Fish. And um, the perimeters were Hamilton would send you the block, we have a while to work on them, and we do our engravings on them, we make it exactly what we want, print an edition for us to keep, to sell, to do whatever we want with, and then we're all said and done, we take the final block, and we wrap it up and we ship it to Hamilton and they actually get to keep it in their permanent collection at the Type Museum. So people that come in and do uh, workshops and things like that, when they're making posters and stuff, they can lock in one of our blocks along with their lettering and their type blocks and use this as a poster. I had a blast working on this project, so I decided to film it right from the beginning up until the end just to kind of show how I work from sketch all the way to the final print. I started by taking some India ink and just using it to stain the surface of the wood block. I find it makes it a little bit easier as you start engraving to see what lines you're actually carving into the block. I then took my drawing of the carp that I did, uh, put some graphite on the back of the paper and did a simple transfer of the drawing onto the piece of wood. Um, after that I just took a micron black pen and redrew it so I could see it a little bit clearer. I started engraving by using a diamond tip burn. It makes really fine little lines and I find when I'm doing engravings that I like to put in a lot of the information using one of these tools first and then I go back and I take a wider tool um, and I make thicker areas that make brighter highlights and leave better shadows. Here I'm actually using one of those tools that has a wider tip on it. This one's called a spit sticker or an elliptical tint tool. And it's kind of cool because you can see the little pigtails of wood come out right from the tip of the tool because it's so sharp.
here I'm taking a tool that has a larger flat tip on it and it's used for clearing away areas that you don't want to print on the block. There's a lot on this block. The, the image of the fish in the waves is going to sort of float in the paper. So we kind of, I had to kind of take all the background out of the block and um, get it nice and flat so that the inking surface will just be the lines that I carved in for the actual fish. At this stage, I took a print, a proof print, just to see how things were coming along, and I wanted to see if there was any noise coming in around the areas that were cleared out on the edges of the block. Uh, surely there were, so I actually went in with a Dremel tool and a sanding bit, and I brought down a lot of the area around the fish and the waves very, very flat and quite a bit lower than the printing surface. Just so when I actually went to print the addition, it's a lot easier and you don't end up with any of that inky noise all around on the paper. Beginning printing the addition of this block was a lot different than I usually do. Uh, normally I use a jig where I lock the resin grave blocks into them and they just slide through the press using blankets like a traditional relief print would be done on the edging press. But the, these blocks are a little bit higher, they're actually type high. So between them and the paper and the blankets, they actually didn't fit under the wheel of my press. So what I had to do was completely modify the way I printed them. And I started by taking the block itself and just making an even layer of double-sided tape. And then taking the block and sticking it down to the press bed so that it was completely secure on the bed and it wasn't going to move while it went under the roller during printing. With the block secure on the press, I put two rails on each side made out of old resin grave blocks and got ready to ink. I rolled out a nice even layer of black ink and then I placed the brayer on top of those two resin grave rails and simply coast it back and forth. That way it just inks the printing surface of the fish block. When you remove the two rails, you have your block secured on the press, sort of ready to go. And then what I did is I took two smaller resin grave blocks and I put them on each side just so when I laid the printing paper down to actually run it through the press, the paper wasn't going to flop over the block and make it a little bit of a problem. I thought it'd be better to have a little bit of extra um, surface for the paper to rest on. The paper went onto the block like normal, nice and evenly, and then I had one sheet that I used as sort of um, a buffer. And then I actually had to put a mat board on top of it to run it through the press. Again, mostly because of the height of the block not being able to fit with my normal blankets. So as it ran through, I kind of had to keep an eye on it with my hand and make sure that it didn't jump too high on the press and that everything stayed nice and smooth. Once it was through the press, I took the mat board off and the buffer sheet, and I ended up with a really nice print. It came out very crisp and clean. Um, the black sections were very dark, and the lines didn't fill in, so the mat board actually worked really well. I know sometimes when I use my blankets on blocks, uh, I have to adjust a lot of pressures and stuff so things don't fill in and they don't get too blurry, but this was a perfect solution, and um, I really liked the way the, the print came out. I hung the prints up to dry for a few days and then once they were done I simply took them down and trimmed them all to the same exact paper size. They were signed and numbered and ready to go. And that's basically it. I ended up printing an edition of 50 of these for my, um, my own use. And now I'm going to wrap up the block and send it off to the Hamilton Tite Museum for their permanent collection. Uh, if you're ever taking a workshop there and you want to make a poster that has a holy carpet 
uh, locked into the block, then there you go. You can use mine, you can use many of the other ones from the Wood Engraver Network uh, members. Um, I'm going to leave uh, links in the description box to the Hamilton Type Foundation, to the Wood Engravers Network, and to some other great stuff uh, like my Etsy shop if you're interested in picking up one of these prints. And uh, that's about it for this video. So if you liked it, hit the thumbs up button. And uh, please feel free to subscribe. I do a lot of printmaking projects at Spofford Press. We do a lot of engravings, mostly relief engravings and woodcuts, uh, a lot of letterpress projects and cool stuff like that. So thanks.